in less than 24 hours, I'm going to be taking this bow down to Florida, killing a wild hog with it. But as of right now, we have a small problem, and it's that this bow is not shooting arrows straight. Needless to say, we got a lot of work to do. looking at the paper tuning, it's actually pretty perfect, so. I'll be honest, guys, I was not expecting this. Last night, our paper tears was looking more like this, this, and this. You can see from what happened right here, the arrow was actually flying like this sideways, but it looks like these three shots, honestly, those are pretty much perfect. We was dealing with this same issue in the last bow hunting video, and a lot of you guys actually didn't understand why I was doing it. So let me take a second to explain. Obviously, whenever you shoot an arrow, you want it to fly like this. As of yesterday, the arrows were actually coming off like this, so they were actually actually being a little bit sideways. Now, whenever you're shooting these, which are extremely aerodynamic field points, that really doesn't bother them very much because the veins actually help steer it. But that's not necessarily the case whenever you take this off and change it out for something like this. Now, this right here is a big broadhead, 150 grains, and as you can see, unlike the field point, this is not aerodynamic. That's why if the arrow's coming off like this, no problem, because everything's straight. But if it's coming off like this, check that out. This big old tip starts acting as a wing, and then you got the broadhead and the veins working against each other, and it's really hard to get consistent broadhead fly. But you know what? We really don't have to worry about that, because we figured it out. Now we just gotta get my bow sided in. We're literally, like, the, the time is ticking down. We got, like, six hours until, well, I gotta leave for Florida. Oh boy, oh boy, these things are mean. Let's just say this, I've upgraded my equipment since deer season. I'm really excited to see what this arrow is gonna do versus a hog. Let me explain. Again, I know y'all are tired of me explaining everything. It'll do, let's just do something fun. Back in deer season, I was using something like this. A really light arrow with a light expandable broadhead. Since I'm hunting hogs, they're pretty much bulletproof. And a really lightweight setup like this may not get the job done. If this broadhead right here hits the bone the wrong way, it honestly may break off a blade. So I'm going to go ahead and weigh this arrow. Total, it is 399 grains, which isn't bad, but it's not heavy. This one here, my new arrow, is 550 grains. It's still not super heavy, but it's a whole lot heavier than that one. Plus, with the big fixed blade broadhead if this thing hits a bone the bone's just gonna have to get out of the way because this thing ain't stopping but as of right now the bow the arrow and kg is tuned in and we just gotta get us sighted in then we ready to go to florida and we ready to uh eat some wild bacon which might not taste good but we'll see and oh yeah i may have forgot to mention one thing i actually have to build all these arrows welcome to my workshop When I tell you guys I've been down here for a month fiddling with this bow trying to get it to shoot perfect, I'm not kidding. I've been down here for a month. If you don't believe me, I've been down here so long. There is an arrow literally stuck inside of the concrete blocks and it's been there for a couple weeks. 20 yards, letting it rip. We'll see if I can get a consistent grouping. I think I may have just hit one of my arrows. Not a bad groupings for 20 yards. First time these arrows have been slung. These two right here were actually touching each other. This in here might be an oddball, but even if not, that's still a two inch group at 20 yards. Not bad, not bad at all. Considering that these arrows were $5 on Amazon. As long as they met the specs, I didn't see a reason not to try them. 300 spine, straightness is .003. That's the same specs as $12 arrows. And I got these for six. Half the price, they just don't have a brand. And so far, they're doing just as good. Let me adjust the size a little bit and we may be hitting dead on right here. Okay, grouping still really good, but I need to move it a little bit higher, a little bit more to the right. We good. We 
good. Yeah, we, yeah, we good, we good. Let's go outside. It's crazy because right now I'm scraping ice off my arrows, but this time tomorrow I'm gonna be scraping sweat off my head. It's a pretty big climate change. 30 yards, new arrows. Looks like we're hitting pretty good, but we're off a little bit to the left. We can fix that though. Minor adjustment. We're hitting pretty good. I think we're ready for the broadhead test. Now I'm gonna take this arrow, put a broadhead on it, and if we tuned it right, the broadhead should hit the same spot as the field point. Moment of truth. And just so you know, guys, this isn't the exact broadhead I'm using on the pig. This is just the one I'm gonna use for practice. For the pigs, I'm gonna get one of the sharp ones out of the pack. All right, we are ready to go. Yeah. Moment of truth, right here. 30 yards with the broadhead. Let's see what happens. We're ready. Let's go to Florida. now in Florida guys I'm out here with deer meat for dinners cameraman as for Rob himself we don't really know where he is but we do know that he's right there with us in his heart right there on the bus <laughs> anyways we're down here since we had a decent little drive we're gonna take out the bow a little bit and we're just gonna make sure it's still good and I need to kind of know where to shoot a hog because I don't really know that yet it would start raining as soon as we try to film. <laughs> now it's raining but we're just going to make it do anyways y'all saw me pack it up earlier basically the same thing pulling it out I don't think the bow sight should be knocked off I don't know. What do you think? Looks good to me. We set us up a buck target and a pig target. I'm sighted in for 20 yards and 30 yards. So 25, we're just going to make our best guess. You usually hunt with one of the quiver? Yeah, quivers are good. I never use mine, and that's kind of a problem because I only pack one arrow usually. Bad idea. I shot a tree. <laughs> it's bad. Let's see. I'll get my range finder. I think so, except for the orange. <laughs> Behind the shoulder. Yeah. I hit the shoulder. He might have died. Yeah, I think he's all right. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go check out the kill. Big buck. We're gonna name him Jeremy. Didn't go 20. Did I kill him? What do you think? Shoot, yeah. We're shooting stinking man broadheads, son. Holy cow. Stinking. You drop that on your foot, you're going to the hospital. <laughs> oh, yeah. Real nice um, one and a half long shot, baby. <laughs> It's a solid four dollar arrow on Amazon. Let's check out the pig. Okay, now the pig, the pig, I don't know. Would this have killed the pig? Do I gotta aim lower on him? Do I gotta aim back on him? I mean, I feel like I'd probably hit maybe a shoulder blade. Yeah, I think you would have dropped him there. Oh, you think so? Yeah. If Let's, this would have been... Any, anywhere right in here is, is money. From broadside too? Mm-hmm. Okay, so if I aimed right here broadside, would that not get him? Uh, you probably hit shoulder. It depends on the size of a hog. You know, a hog this size are a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Um, you're fine behind the shoulder, just like a deer. You know, mm -hmm. quartering away. You know, back a little bit. On a big giant hog, yeah, you'll have like a like a hog shield here. Yeah. And so if you hit here, you're not going to get that much penetration. But so you kind of keep it back a little bit. So broadside's good. Mm -hmm. Quartering towards you is that a no shot? Because I probably, I've heard the front side of a hog's pretty tough. I probably wouldn't, yeah. As for that, I think the bow is decently sighted in. I mm -hmm. think we're ready to go. Now we're going to go check some feeders, I think, right? Yeah. Check some feeders, scout out, and we're thinking this evening we might even get to do a spot and stock. So right there may just become a reality. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, we are on our way into the jungle. And uh, we got my guide here. He's a, he's a subscriber. 
subscriber. He's going to take us out and put us on the house. Put us on a Eurasian mower. Tell us what we're riding in here. What's that? What we're driving in here, Volkswagen? This here is a swamp buggy. It's about 30 foot off the ground. 80 inch tires. Okay, if y'all didn't hear him, he said the first spot's over there. So be quiet, don't talk. I feel like I'm in Africa. You know, we're gonna keep looking. I oh, bet. <laughs> How big is a big hog? 200. Is that pretty big? That's bigger than me. Think of it like this. We're hunting for a big athlete. Like if we saw a 400 pound man walk up, you'd be like, well, he's large, but I'm not sure he's an athlete. But if you saw a guy walk up like 6'2", 205, and veins popped out of his <laughs> neck, you'd be like, he looks real scary. That's what we're looking for in a hog. We're not looking for a big fat. Blech. We're looking for Zorro. <laughs> Another guy I've never heard of. <laughs> you never see Zorro? No. No, oh, oh, he's scary. <laughs> is he real? Or is he Zorro's the guy with the sword, the sword. And he cuts the Z and everything. Zorro was here. You want a cookie? Yeah, I want a cookie. Watch out for moccasins. A lot of moccasins and a handful of rattlesnakes. Sounds good. All right, guys, watch out. Be careful.
It was good and straight though. All right, guys, I missed him. I gotta figure out where the arrow is. It had a loon out there. It is. Man, fall oh, right into a tree. <laughs> All right, guys, so you just witnessed me miss, but it wasn't me. It was the polar vortex. The gravity's different down here. Right? Yeah, I, I, I would go with that. Yeah. It's moon faces. Could you see him? Yeah, he was big too. That's a big hog. The problem is you hit him far back. You hit him back here. Well, he definitely hit the hog, but we don't have a light. So we're gonna have to go get a light and then come back and see what happened. Here you go. Let's go inspect your arrow back at the buggy. All right guys, so right now we are tracking him at night in Florida. We're trying to figure out where he went through the fence. Yeah, we know we shot him over there, but we've actually came to where we saw him run under the fence to just go ahead and skip a few feet. First little bit of blood. Came right through the trail yeah. that I parked on. <laughs> He's bleeding most out of his left side so far. Okay guys, let me explain for a second. Last night we got up on two hogs and I shot at both of them. As for the first one, y'all already saw this, but I'm just gonna explain it a little bit. And to preface, I was 30 yards away from the pig and I was unfortunately using my 20 yard pin because I don't know, dude, it looked like it was this close. I didn't know it was 30 yards. Anyways, here's my arrow. It comes in, ooh, hits right down there. Literally, literally, I ain't even kidding, right here. An inch above and I would have at least got a little fur. Wouldn't have killed it, but I would have got a little fur. So yeah, my sight was 10 yards off. And you know me, KG out here chucking stinking telephone poles, it drops quite a bit in 10 yards. As for the other pig, okay, I'm gonna blame it on, uh, I don't know, the darkness. On the second hog, my shot was about right here. Now, broadside, perfect. Quartering away, perfect. Quartering two, I didn't hit anything except the liver and guts. Now the problem was not that uh, I necessarily took an awful shot. I was a little bit far back even still, but whenever I decided to pull the trigger, he was broadside and uh, mid-flight. He turned a little bit and then the angle was changed to about something like that. Now obviously I was still a little bit far back, Today, I'm going right there. I may hit a shield, but I'm stinking shooting logs for a reason, son. It's gonna stink, go straight through the stinking shield. Or at least we're gonna attempt it. I'm stinking fart up, son. I'm stinking fart up. Something's gonna die tonight. Also, unfortunate fact, that one from last night that I did hit, it um, it's about 100% chance it is dead, but I hit it right in a liver gut shot. Dogs don't necessarily bleed a ton as it is. And whenever I get a subpar shot, unfortunately, it bled three drops and that was it. Very sad, I'm not happy about it, but sometimes it just do be like that, okay? Now we're gonna head back out this evening and try again, but before we get out there, I'm gonna practice. Now I know what you're saying, Colonel Duke, why are you practicing? You don't need none of that. You're great right now. I mean, you're basically a perfect shot. Yeah, I know I am, but you know what? Per pr practice doesn't make per perfect, practice makes perfect. The pig is 33 yards away. As long as I set my sight to 33 yards and it is fully daylight to where I can see the pig, this shot should literally be a perfect shot. And I'm confident that it will be. I don't know about you guys, you, you don't, I'm not, I've not really given you much reason to have a lot of faith in me at this point. But I'm just saying, I'm confident. I'm gonna put it right behind the shoulder and it's gonna exit right in front of their offside shoulder. What did I do? As long as it's not a real hog, I'm stinking deadly, man. I'm stinking deadly. That was exactly where I was aiming. Just a little bit behind the shoulder, but it's exiting right up here in front of the offside shoulder. That should give me a perfect lung shot. I'll try it one more time and see what we can do. Let's say he's broadside this time. If he's quartering to me, that's not even a good shot at all for a hog. They're really strong up front. You need to get a broadside or a quartering away. That's what we're gonna do now. El Hago is right there, oh. El Death Sticko is right here, oh. He's quartering right now. I think we can get him. He ain't moved much. Dude, that is perfect. I'm starting to think that my 3D target rating is like 99 overall, bro. Seriously. In real life, 
I'm at, I'm like 45, 45 overall. It's pretty good. Almost hit the same arrow. Stinking, put him in the dirt, son. Didn't go 20. Thing to topple him over, son. He ain't walking out of that. Both those shots are deadly lethal. Both of those shots, even at different angles. Deadly, man, deadly. All right, guys, target practice is over. We are gonna go actually try to kill a hog. Well, we've been trying to kill a hog, but we gonna get it done tonight, one way or another, okay? Let's just say that. We getting it done tonight. Let's go. Hey, we got some hogs. <laughs> Was that a good shot? Drilled them, son. Listen, so here's the big thing. When I called you, I knew we had a bunch of hogs down here. <laughs> and if you've seen, you see our deer. Mm -hmm. I take a lot of care of my deer, man. I don't want nobody shooting my deer. But what happens is all these hogs come in here and take over. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Call you, call Mr. 6.5 Creedmoor, and we come do some work. <laughs> Where did you shoot that one at? Right in the shoulder? This one? Yeah. I domed that one and then I shot that one in the shoulder. But we got three hogs. Let's go load them up. What should we do with the bow? Just set it down? Well, let's just give this hog just a minute. Yeah. And we'll go from there. Hey, what do you think? It's pretty good. <laughs> they looked right at us and didn't really care that much. Well, what happens they is can't see. the way the light is, yeah. he was looking. He was in the light looking back here in the shade. And the wind was perfect. We have cows on this property. So they heard the movement. Look, couldn't see anything. You got that KG camo. Doing work, boys. All right, so mine ran over there. We're going to give it some time. This is the one. I was thinking I've never even seen a wild hog before, except for the other two that I missed. Well, I hit the one. I'm going to assume he's dead. This one was apparently dome pieced. They're fur is like wire brush stinking stinking massive dude what in the world happened to pigs for them to turn out like this that's like you could literally cut that off and like brush your teeth with it i'm assuming the boys have bigger teeth because uh, i don't know if that's too much to be afraid of could be wrong could be wrong i don't know but i think that's a big female which is good i shot mine mine was standing right over here but it didn't get a pass through it went in and stuck i think i'm pretty sure i shot it right in the hardest part of its body Did the arrow break? Oh, no, you got some blood on there. And it broke off. And it broke. Alrighty guys, I'll give y'all a little bit of an update of what's happening. So far, it's looking like a repeat of last night, which uh, wasn't good. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
sidebar real quick. We'll keep this just between me and you. Um, I'm in a real predicament right now. I can't figure out if I'm just not a good shot or if I just don't know where to aim. This is the one that Rob stinking dome pieced right in the face, dude, with the 6.5. It didn't go 20. Heck far, dude. It didn't even go 2. But yeah, shot it on the other side. Here's the problem, guys. On my first hog lap, well... Technically, the first hog I hit down here, missed it completely. The second hog, which is the first one I hit, hit about right here, which is nothing but guts. Then this one, I hit right here, which is arguably, possibly, one of the worst spots to hit it. Literally, right on the shoulder bone, the hardest part of the animal. And here's the cool thing, we don't even know if it was a boar or not, which if it was a boar, that means it also had a shield, which is another strong part. Listen guys, we're going iguana hunting in a, in a couple videos, and if I can't get a confirmed kill on an iguana i'm probably just gonna end the trip early okay but yeah i mean so far i've missed one and injured two P looking pretty good and for the record those two that i injured pretty sure they died we just didn't collect them so just saying go ahead and mark them down kg has killed two hogs Kinda. Also, one thing I forgot to mention, we're actually not done looking for that last hog because we got really good blood on it. Like, good enough to hopefully die. But we got a guy coming with dogs. Maybe. We'll see if he ever shows up. But yeah, we may actually track it with dogs. And if we track it with dogs, there's about a 110% chance that we find it. So those are, those are pretty good odds. But yeah, I'll catch him whenever he gets here. If he doesn't get here, I'm probably just going to end the video right now. <laughs>